Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan, and on this episode, I wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction because we didn't get a chance to do it when Alex and I recorded. What we decided to do is we we had a bit of an interesting year, a month, a day, a week, a year. I think I said year already. The point is, is that it, it's been kind of a crazy year, 2020, and we uh, we sat down, started thinking about some of the ideas that we had kicking around for episodes, and ultimately, uh, I got an idea in my head. Hey, it's been over a year since we did anything about Reddit, and the last time we went to look at Reddit, we were looking at tabletop game design. And this time, I thought I would look at a different subreddit, and so we started perusing. Uh, game ideas. So that's what this episode is going to be. Actually, it's two episodes because it was uh, particularly lengthy when we put it all together, and um, we found some really interesting ones that we were able to riff off of and start to, you know, brainstorming some ideas of our own, both in tabletop and in uh, video games. So please enjoy. This is just kind of a, a nice little brainstorming session with the help of Reddit being our focal point, and thank you, of course, to all of the lovely people who wanted to share and uh, help other people utilize some of these game designs, even if they weren't going to use it. It's a wonderful thing to be able to export those ideas out to the community and let other people start thinking about it, so thank you very much to all the creatives out there who are uh, trying to help other creatives by giving them something to work with. Uh, Thank you very much. Enjoy this episode. Yeah, th- this one is, uh, you're an evil villain, and by God, you will monologue if it means the death of you. All right, then. I dreamt this idea, and I know it's kind of stupid, but it's just meant to be a comical game that you wouldn't necessarily invest a lot of time in. The idea is that you're a supervillain, and you must maintain the supervillain tropes or be laughed at by your counterparts. <laughs> sure, you could easily kill the superhero with one shot to the head, but they won't die knowing you're super evil plot. <laughs> that sounds convoluted and hilarious, though. Yeah, it, it's, no, that's, that's great. Um, ga- gameplay is imagined as you have the superhero captured, begin the monologue, maybe some dialogue cues are presented. While you're doing this, you are also walking around the room checking to make sure the superhero is not planning an escape. Did they loosen the ropes? Their hands are tied in. Is their sidekick in the vents? Did they use their telekinetic powers to open the drawer, the, the drawer that contains the key to their shackles? <laughs> Probably a point system based on time or something like that. Uh, I think, like, this could be a really good uh, variation of, like, Fiasco. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely see that. Now, I'm trying to figure out, like, me personally, I'm just trying to figure out if this would be good as, like, an actual board game. Where, you're, where like, you have the grid and in the center you see the little superhero, it, you know, tied to the chair or whatever. And the supervillain is like wandering around, and it, it would almost look a little bit like a clue board in some ways. Yeah, I think it would do. I think it would change. do better as. I definitely think it'd do a lot better as, uh, like, a fiasco variant, where mm. it, where it's all improv, because then it's more fun. Because it's like, yeah, you've got a monologue, so you've got to balance the narration of a player monologuing with mm-hmm. like the other player setting the scene kind of deal, mm-hmm. and so like. You know that the superhero is probably going to escape at the end, so you have to figure out how they escape, and you have to make it interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I do like the idea. There's so much... Like, I remember I've, I've played video games that were about being the supervillain. Um, and, uh, yeah, like are, Fable. Are, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> Depending on how you want to play it, yeah, you could always do it as Fable. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to think what it was. Was it like Evil Genius? I want to say it was one of the games, which are just terrific where it, it, it just turns the whole thing on its head. There's so much fun stuff to do. Like basically if you wanted to play Dr. Evil instead of Austin Powers and just, uh, go around like that, that has a lot of interesting potential. Yeah. That whole idea that you have to monologue everything is, is always such a great trope because it's like, well, you're going to kill the hero anyway. So... Why are you even telling them this? It's not necessary. They're going to be dead. Why would you do... That's something that never resonated with me in, uh, like, the James Bond films. I must explain to you my entire plan. 
And and while we're doing that, here's the laser, and I'm just gonna have the laser go super slow towards you while we're doing that. It's like, dude, or you could just speed up the laser and we could just be done with this whole thing real fast. I think the villains in these movies and tropes are like sociopaths who just want to inflict as much pain before they kill them, you know? It's like, oh, this laser's yeah. going to cut you in half starting at the bottom. And it's like, that yeah. won't kill you uh, necessarily up until it like gets further up because it's going to cauterize. You're not going to bleed out. You might yes. die from shock first. I don't know. Yeah, you you probably would. Actually, you would probably be dead before it actually reached like your your head or anything because of that. The thing that I'm kind of figuring, if you're looking at like a Blofeld or a Goldfinger or any of them, is that they're just egomaniacs, and so they need to explain to you how brilliant they are before you die, just to see the shocked look on your face, maybe, of just like, oh wow, that's brilliant. Yeah, it's they all, they all need reactionary. That. If you had come up with this convoluted Rube Goldberg device <laughs> of of a mad plan, you'd want to explain it to somebody beforehand. Sure, sure. But, I mean, I'd probably want to explain, uh, I'd probably just videotape it yeah. and then upload it later after I rule the world sure. and be like, look at how your hero died. <laughs> Isn't this great? Yeah, in, in the modern era, you could just make a, you could just make a video. You yeah. just post the video. But that makes me wonder, okay, so rules for this game, now that we're thinking about this. So you're thinking fiasco. How would you score? Would you score points based on how much of your monologue, like each part of the monologue you would have been able to get well, through without it going? I mean, I mean, you don't just have a bunch of different supervillains, maybe. I mean, if you're doing that, maybe you have it be like, oh, one person's a hero, one person's a villain, another person's a sidekick. Um, right. Another person's the hero, like the assistant to the villain, and like you have, like you can pick like different uh, traits maybe that each <laughs> character has, and then you yeah. have that. So you'd be like, oh, so this the villain's sidekick is actually rooting for the good guy and helps him out, or maybe the sidekick wants to be the new hero and is actively trying to get the hero killed. At that point, you almost have two teams. You'd have the villain team and you'd have the hero team. Sure. But you wouldn't necessarily know who's on which team. Except for the villain and the hero themselves. But the other ones might have to have secret roles. Because otherwise that would be kind of like, oh, I get it, you're going to betray me. And you're actually a, a secret double agent. E everyone else's roles would have to be a little bit secretive. They'd, be, they'd have the face that they're showing you, and then whatever their backstory is, which you don't know. Kind of like that. So for the villain, I guess your win conditions is you are able to complete your monologue and then kill the hero. I don't think uh, if it's a fiasco type game, I don't think it has a win condition, does it? You know, I don't think I've played fiasco. Uh, I wouldn't have anyone to play it with anyway. Or maybe it's a cooperative. I don't remember. Honestly, I haven't played fiasco. I know some of it. GMless game for three to five players and uses dice. Yeah, so I guess that this does make sense. Um, as, as a caper gone wrong, I'm just trying to figure out, okay, gameplay, here we go, gameplay, four ordinary six-sided dice per player of two different colors, after dice are exhausted, each player having had four scenes, everyone rolls the dice they have collected, just like when determining who chooses the tilt element and consults the aftermath table to determine whether their characters has a positive or negative outcome, is dead, or is worse than dead. Worse than dead. Eaten by laser crocodiles. <laughs> laser sharks. Always laser sharks. Finally, after the player figures out his or her character's fate, the aftermath is played out. Going around the table, each player takes a turn to narrate a short scene formed into a montage for their characters until all characters run out of dice. At that point, the game is finished. Okay, so basically, it's not so much that there are any kind of win conditions, but maybe you had a positive or negative outcome, or you have died. So for the, so that would probably be bad. The negative outcome for the hero is definitely you died. Negative, actually, for the villain, that's probably also the problem. Your entire base blew up. <laughs> the hero escaped, and your base exploded, and you're missing three arms. You're missing three arms. In, in like, a, a sub-idea... One of the other people that responded here was uh, that you, the player, are secretly on the hero's side, 
and have to make sure the villain doesn't run out of monologue so the hero gets a chance at escaping. Uh, that could be yeah, a win see. condition. See? There you go. Or a positive one, yeah. Oh, and then somebody else also made a brainstorm on that, which was multiplayer, where one is escaping and one is the villain, could easily be a mobile game. Hey, look, we found a way to make it into a mobile game. <laughs> look, we found a skin for Among Us. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> sus. Yeah, basically it's, yeah, basically at that point we're playing Among Us. But if one of the little Among Us people just had another one and spent the entire game explaining how they were the traitor the entire time. <laughs> I was the imposter all along. I, uh, I think that your idea about Fiasco was probably the most interesting one, though. So See, I win. Okay, so this one is, I'm, I'm sure he's thinking about it as a video game, but I think that we could probably, you know, transpose it as tabletop. A game similar to Dead by Daylight, but survivors are bank robbers and the killer is Batman trying to stop them. Isn't that like Payday, except with Batman? In reverse. No, because in Payday, you're the robbers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're the robbers, the killer is Batman trying, and the, oh, yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah, that is. Why didn't they think of that? Oh, well, in in Payday, though, there's there's like a whole system that's working. It's not like one vigilante superhero that's coming after you. Are you sure about the game name? Maybe you're confusing it with Dying Light. <laughs> no, see, it could be that, too. Oh, yeah, it could also, yeah, it could Dying be Dying Light. Light. It could be Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight and, like, Friday the 13th and all of those are um, interesting concepts. But I did try to play Friday the 13th at one point, but I, of course I wanted to just play Jason yeah, and see what happened. He, he goes so slowly, <laughs> and everybody is so annoying in that game. Yeah. No, I think, that, that, I think that's just a variance of any of those, those games where one player case plays the killer and the others play the people trying not to be killed. It's a variant. You're like bank robbers and one person's Batman. And then, of course, what you would do is you'd get a whole bunch of DLCs together. And it would allow you to play as, like, Superman or Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Superman, because you'd never get beaten in. That would be an interesting idea. But, uh, yeah, now that I think about it, you're right. It is a little bit like Payday. It's just not necessarily, like, all the police and law enforcement and everything is coming at you. It would have to be, like, one singular figure that's using all of their traps and tools and gadgets and everything yeah. on you. It, it's the reverse of Dead by Daylight. <laughs> Yes, exactly. It's, it's it's you're the villains, and the hero is coming for you, or the vigilante. Alive at night. There you, there you go. <laughs> alive at night. Okay, so this, I think it's fascinating, because they say this, and immediately I'm like, I think they're making this game? A pirate RPG, think Skyrim or Fallout, with the sailing mechanics of AC4. So that would be Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Yeah, I figured uh, it was Black Flag. Yeah, and not Valhalla. Black Flag, not Valhalla. There's some some mechanics in that one, and in Odyssey they had the ships too. A few of them they had the ships, but uh, people really remember it from from AC4. The thing about it is, though, I believe Ubisoft is still working on something called Skull and Bones which is a game that mostly takes the sailing mechanics from the Assassin's Creed series and just turns that into a game by itself. The thing that's unique about this idea is to try and flesh it out as, like, an epic RPG. I've seen some attempts at doing pirates as an open-world RPG, but they're usually online survival games. Yeah, yeah. If you're gonna do if you're gonna do a game like that, you do Pirates of the Caribbean type game because then you can like yeah. find Jack Sparrow or whatever. Now they they did used to have one that was Pirates Online. They did, which uh, they've made into an open source game now yeah. because Disney stopped supporting them. Yeah. <laughs> which is is a fine game. It's a fun game actually. Uh, might end up being the thing I do for the charity live stream. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Uh, but uh, hey, I I really I thought it was super fun. But if you were looking for something that was a little bit more like the open world where I could maybe like go under the water and everything like that, I think you're probably looking at something similar to an Atlas. Uh, but Atlas is also renowned for being terrible. So 
<laughs> so maybe no. I mean, if you wanted um, to do it, you could probably just mod Skyrim. <laughs> You could probably just mod Skyrim, or you could, tr or you could play, um, but you know, Sea of Thieves, it, but with maybe content. Yeah, that yeah, would be good. Go. Or just put it in space and play No Man's Sky. You, you could just play No Man's Sky. Ooh, if there was just a mod for No Man's Sky and it just made the the heavens look like water. Yeah, then and, you're just you... going from underwater city to underwater city. Yeah, you're just going from underwater city to underwater city. That's perfectly fine. You just that we're going to flood space. We're just going to flood space. That kind of reminds me back when I played Escape Velocity, which is a terrific game. It was a space trading and combat game. You'd go from one planet, one system to another. Uh they did make a mod where they turned it into a, a system where you had battleships and you were on the sea and then all of your ports were just islands and ports of call for you to go to. So, yeah, something like that. Just uh, just make that. Come to think of it, Alex, maybe you have a, an idea, because I can't think of one off the top of my head. In terms of tabletop games, have they made a pirate-themed RPG? Yeah, Pat McNary did, from Orcs Unlimited, called Space Pirates the Musical. Right, right, I forgot. Space Pirates the Musical. I am wondering if they tried to do pirates in more of the vein of like a of a D and D. Uh something like that. So like traditional stat blocks. So like a, a swashbuckler? Yeah. I mean that's a isn't that a class in D D? Swashbuckler is a type of rogue. I mean I don't see the real need to make a specific the entire game is pirate themed where if if you have tons of games that can accomplish that with just settings as themes, so if you were fleshing out maybe the actual combat, like the actual uh, swashbuckling part of it for the combat, uh, but I think you're going to get too deep into the weeds with it. It would be like trying to make uh, Sid Meier's Pirates the actual boarding mini games where you, <laughs> where you have to like do the crossing swords. You have to like try to mechanic all of that out into a tabletop version. That's probably more mechanics than people really want to make for combat. It would take you like 10 minutes to figure out if attacks hit. Or yeah, not. That, that's no fun. The further we got into it, I realized how much not fun that actually would have been. Thanks to Alex for pointing that out. But oh, if you think we were not having fun yet, the next episode we get into a couple different interesting concepts that we get very deep into the weeds on. And it is a far longer episode because we actually get into a real zone for brainstorming. And if I had put both of these together, it would have been like an hour and a half long. And that's just too long for an episode. The next one is going to probably be close to an hour altogether. Until then, though, thank you for joining us. You can find all of our stuff over on our website, delvecast.com. Please check out our Patreon while you are there for all of our early release and extended episodes. And, of course, thank you to our shiny level patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth and Nick, and our special Discord shiny level patron, Drunk Paul. And make sure to follow us on Twitter. I am at Citanium, Alex is at EXP Limited, and the show is at Delve Podcast. Until we meet again in the Reddit space looking at design ideas, I wish you all the best of luck. May you continue to survive through 2020. It has thrown oh so much at us individually and as entire civilizations. So hopefully you are doing well out there and we will meet you again here in good spirits. Thank you very much and we'll see you on the next one. I'm scared to read this one. Which one? Because... <laughs> nah, that's not very interesting anyway. <laughs>